Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People, and this episode is absolutely bananas. I've got Nicholas Nick here from Lead Mining Pros, and he has made over 7 million calls to property owners, and we're going to be talking about all of those results. Also, which markets you should be cold calling in and which markets you shouldn't. So strap in, get ready. We've got the incredible Nick Nicholas. Here we go. So the big question, Nicholas, is what have you learned after calling 7 million property owners? Mm. What are the big lessons? Mm. What are the big numbers? What are, what are the big, you know, um, aha moments have you had yeah. in your yeah. business? No, absolutely. So um, a couple of things is, you know, scale, right? Uh, scale to get to 7 million dials isn't easy. Okay. Right. Uh, we all want to grow our businesses, but every time we grow it, it comes with pain. So the first thing is getting there, scaling, right? So the first thing we have to do is we have to worry about spam calls. First thing that comes to mind. It's the first thing I learned. Well, if our phone number gets flagged as spam, what's, what does 7 million calls matter? Mm -hmm. It's just a vanity number at that point, right? It's really more about conversations. Yeah. That's a great place to go next, which is like now we're talking about how many people answered the phone. You know, I did a campaign. This one guy got a list, skip trace through prop stream, mm -hmm. sent it over to us, 4% contact rate. Right. He goes, Nick, what's going on? I said, where'd you get a skip trace from? Prop stream. Okay, well, I haven't seen anything that bad come from prop stream before. You know, it might be a little bit lower, nothing noticeable. I said, okay, why don't we re skip trace it? We average 7 to 12%. I that's don't. that's the sweet spot. Right. 7% seven, 7 should be the low end. The minimum. I yeah. agree. Anything mm -hmm. below 7, you're in a questionable, I call that questionable. 7% or lower is questionable. Well, it's usually one of two things, right? It's usually you have a bad caller ID number that's mm -hmm. popping up uh, mm -hmm. or, or just getting blocked completely. Yeah. Or um, you are, um, you're, you're calling bad data. Yeah. You have bad skip tracing. Or there is a third, which is huge metro areas, mm -hmm. I've learned. They're, the thing that we, first of all, we have our own competitors, real estate on real estate, but I used to live in Phoenix. Right. Everyone fucking called me. Yeah. AT&T called me. Asked me if I want to get a cell phone. DirecTV called me. Right. The windshield repair guy cold calls me sure. out here. So the other thing you're also, we're competing with too, is these metro areas, everyone's calling these people too. So it's not always just us, investor saturation, mm. but it's also other. So I'd say those three things. So they're trained more to not answer that's exactly, unknown numbers. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm getting pounded all day, I'm getting, only entrepreneurs answer every phone call, <laughs> right? Because we have to if we want to keep making money, mm -hmm. you know, so those are the ones you get through to. But that's exactly right. That's the community training. So I have some markets that I can list real quick that I would stay away from for cold calling. Yeah, so go ahead. Another lesson from 7 million dials, right? Yeah. Um, Orlando, mm -hmm. Disney's there. Mm. Global. So one, one of my new rules is anything with global renown, stay away from. Okay. Depending on your budget. Yeah. That's probably a new person advice. If you got a big budget and you're a veteran, go into those markets. Okay. You can afford it, mm -hmm. right? Um, new person, I would stay away from or Miami, mm -hmm. Orlando, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, Southern California. Anyone that calls me in any of those, I'm very transparent. I'm not going to let, I don't care if you want to give me your money. If I'm not going to get you results, I'm not letting you buy that. Right. Right. And then I'll direct them. We offer texting too, which is really what I recommend in those saturated markets. Right. Texting is a one-on-one -on -one billboard. Yeah. That's what I consider, right? It's like a billboard that we know they got guaranteed. So that's harder to get around. Do you like a texting platform for that? I have my own. Okay. And what I've learned is um, I like my own for a reason. I do not, I, I'm grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've been A2P10 DLC for three years. I do not have to put reply stop to opt out on my messages. So that makes everyone think I'm a real person. Yeah, sure. Because everyone else has to have. Can other people use that or just you? Oh, yeah. I sell that. Yeah. What, what is it called? Um, it's just done for you texting on my website. Got yeah. it. Yeah, no, it's great. Nice and easy. Yeah. yeah. You sign up, you send me a list. I text everyone. We even do replies for free for you, too. Yeah. Yeah, so like I think 500 texts is 82 bucks. And then that's actually five text conversations. So 500 phone numbers get sent to me. I'll go back and forth with them for you. Not follow up. Mm -hmm. I, if someone doesn't reply, I don't follow up. Let me ask you this. I think that this is an important way to take this conversation. So um, when somebody's starting out. Yeah. 
we, we really look at when we're putting together a custom blueprint for um, the Rhino tribe members, um, we look at their schedule, we look at their market, we look at their experience, and we look mm. at their budget. Okay. Right? Because those it. are the four main factors, and right. everybody's different. Yeah. Right. Everybody's schedule is right. going to be different. You're, everybody's you're creating experience. Creating an ever. avatar is sure. really what you're doing. Yeah. Right. Well, it, but in that we've we've got we've got a whole we, we've got certain marketing channels that that, that fit we that niche. yes exactly yes, got it. and one of that is especially if you're getting started and you're new and you don't have a huge budget and you're part time it's either you're calling or you're texting. Do you have a suggestion of, okay, listen, based on what your situation is, you should be texting versus calling. So what's the main factor there for you? The guy I was just on the phone with. Yeah. Had this exact problem. Nick, I've paid everybody. Yeah. I hired all the coaches. I have not closed my first deal yet. Mm -hmm. He said, Nick, I'm so far into this. There ain't no turning back, but I'm getting defeated. What do I need to do? Right. Same question, mm -hmm. I feel like. Just said differently. So this is who that advice is for. I said texting without a doubt. Texting offers the lowest cost per lead, period. Mm. Period. They are the ugliest leads. Yeah. Right? Just, but that's how the Explain world works. Explain ugly to people. Thank you. Um, uh, sarcastic, time wasters. You know, um, I always say it takes four text leads to equal the quality of one calling lead. Oh, that's great that's, metrics. Yeah. And that's because... It doesn't take a lot. Hey, you want to sell your house? Yeah, bucko, click. You know, right. you don't have to put a lot of attention. To pick up a phone and lie to someone for five minutes, whether you want to sell your house or not, way less common. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, whatever, buddy. Tell me what you got, right? It's very easy. So that's why I call them ugly. But if you're new, what does ugliness breed? Experience, right? And so one thing I tell everyone is you need to pursue every lead. Mm hmm to take it as far as it can go. And my theory there is, even if you don't close that one, you're gonna close the next one that's just like it. Mm -hmm. So if you quit early, you, you're missing out on that next level. So I use leads as my training program. Mm -hmm. Get the lead, what did the lead teach us? What are we gonna do next? So texting, definitely lowest cost per lead. Okay. Now, now if somebody's doing just on their own, what kind of budget would you have to have to get get that going you have enough phone numbers enough addresses and a platform to well text. god you know i mean i'll be honest or with maybe they're texting on your platform well i was gonna say you know so let's let's work through texting on your own yeah okay you um launch control yeah 500 bucks per month yep whether you send a text or not right think about that yeah with me you, you give me 500 bucks you bought a certain amount of text messages you can't waste it. Okay. I'm a huge fan on minimizing waste. Right. And that's just buying the platform. We still have to get the phone numbers, train someone to reply it, figure out how to use the software, mm -hmm. send those. And that's a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I learned when I used to run education companies is we they cannot learn lead gen and real estate at the same time. Mm. Think about that, right? Okay. Lead gen is its own. Well, that's, that's, it's powerful. Well, listen, you know, um, every... every um, welcoming onboarding call that I have is listen, all you have to focus on is finding the deals. Right. That's it. Just find the opportunities. All will we'll help you get them through the finish line. Yeah. I'll help you underwrite them. We'll help you do That's all right. of those stuff. You just have to hunt. Right. You have to hunt for those opportunities, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. That's and right. so that's that. I think that that is the purpose of of mentorship and coaching is just find the opportunity. We'll walk you through it. Well, and that is exactly right. And when I ran, and what you're saying is you want to do the the front end. You want to be the tip of the spear the to stuff. filter through all the ugly stuff. Give those leads to the the your your clients and then they would bring it to their coaches or their mentors or whatever That's else right. to make sure that it gets through the finish line so i i am like their access point because it's like again you know to finally yeah, but don't you think they should learn the skills or do you think it's just overwhelming i think that they should so there's two ways to look at that yeah right so i learning the skill is separate you can learn the skill by hand dialing yeah right hey here's a list to give them a homework, call 100 people. Yeah. Make the cold calls. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And not just that. Then when they hire me, they're going to go, damn, you guys are awesome, right? right? But someone that just hires us up front, they don't know the pain yeah, yeah, yeah. that we're alleviating sure. from them either. Sure. Um, so I do agree with learning the skill, but we have to make sure it happens at the right time, mm -hmm. right? So um, a analogy I'll make up on the spot is piano, mm -hmm. right? Well, A, the piano is its own monster. Well, what if you had to learn to build your piano bench yourself? before you played the piano, where are you gonna sit? Mm -hmm. 
well, I don't know how to build benches. I was just hoping to play piano. Well, we got to get good at good at woodworking first. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, although I don't disagree, it's good maybe to learn. It's where does it show up in the process? If it's too early, they're learning your platform, the software platform, the CRM, it's the too real much. estate. It's too much. Well, not only that, but and, and, and listen, it's great to to get into those things and understand those things. But I see it as creative avoidance. That's right. I see it as, well, I got to go learn all of this platform and I got to learn everything. And it stops us from what is actually income producing, yes. which is having a quality conversation that's with right. a property owner. And that's what happens. Everyone gets sidetracked to what's really, even so I, I offer a CRM is very basic. It's go high level. Yep. Tons of tabs on the left. On my training video, I go, you're going to live in two places, opportunities and conversations. Love it. Don't get nerdy. Mm -hmm. Don't start, oh, well, I can make websites. You don't need a website. You do not need a website. Mm -mm. No, I've never heard an investor, especially a new one, say, thank God for my website. Right, 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 right. You know, if you're doing PPC and all that stuff, it makes total sense. But if you're in your first six months... Website's not going to change your life at all. Right. Right. Don't go down that route. And that's what I've learned. I And I'm good at that, too, because guess what? I have ADHD. So I've spent my whole life distracted. Yeah. So it's no surprise that I'm good at removing distra- I've had to do the same thing for myself. Sure. Every day. But I, I think you're right. And I love it when people cold call. But if they were to... Because if they bought Mojo Dialer, mm-hmm. now they got to figure out how to use Mojo Dialer, mm-hmm. and they got to figure out how to pull lists. It's yeah. actually even better. You just gave me an idea for a great product. Like when they sign up for me, I should almost give them a hundred records free, skip traced, and say, "These are for you to call. We're yeah. going to call these two thousand records for you, but you should you should cut your teeth." What's the percentage of people that you think would actually make those calls? Nobody. So <laughs> when I when I ran that when I ran this coaching company, this is a true story. Yeah. This guy he paid thirty thousand dollars to learn. Yep. The first piece of homework we gave him was to call sellers on Craigslist. Sure. Just get the practice. Brilliant. For sale by owners. He, yeah. He called. I'm the executive. He calls me up. Oh, what the hell's going on over there? You guys told me to call Craigslist owners. That is a waste of my time. Yeah. I said, sorry. I have a question for you. Um, you paid us thirty thousand dollars to teach you how to invest in real estate. Yes, I did. And the very first thing we told you to do, you're telling us you're not doing it? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, do you understand that that's like a problem? Like, we're not telling you this is the rest of your life. We want you to get comfortable with the conversations. Mm -hmm. And that leads to my point. Lowest cost per lead is where we want to learn. When we're new and we pursue high cost per lead methods. I love this. I cannot afford, like direct mail, $300 to $1,000 cost per lead, Mm -hmm. right? That's awesome for a veteran who's already closed 20 deals. Sure. They know what to do with the $300 lead. Yep. Our leads average anywhere from 25 on a super amazing campaign all the way up to, I'd say, 175 on a, on a kind of poor one, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where you want to learn. You can't afford to learn on a $300 to $1,000 lead. And the, not, well, you can, but how, my, how much is in the coffers? Mm-hmm. How long could you go for? Mm-hmm. Right. And so each lead is going to tell a story and that lead is going to show us, like I mentioned earlier, how to close the next one, even if this one doesn't close. So I, I recommend lowest cost per lead pursuit first. Build up your experience as your experience raises. Go into higher cost per lead strategies or maybe you got so good mm-hmm. converting low cost per leads. You'd never have to. Right. So those are those are my thoughts. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, we're in alignment there. We we talk about the five stages of the business. The first one um, is find your tribe, find your find find people that are going to support you in yeah. this. Because if you're just getting into this business and you don't, so you didn't low. come from a real estate family right. or you know an investor family, mm. which almost nobody does. Mm. You need to be around people that are doing this no. and that are a few steps ahead of you because no. it's gonna you're, you're gonna become the people you spend yeah. the most time with, right? right? Yeah. The second the second step, which most people would call the first step, is proof of concept. Do your first deal, right? right? Yeah. And then from there, it's getting consistency. But what we see is, if you see it as like a chart that's sloping up, that first two phases is all outbound. Right. It's all you reaching out to the property owners, right? right? right. Because you're building the discipline, you're building the experience, yes. you know how to ask the right questions, you're doing all that stuff. You're doing the tougher part of the business. Yeah. And this is really where the grinder is. This is right. really where that 90 yeah. days is going to make or break right. you, where yeah. you're finding these leads, you're, you're, you're trying right. to set appointments, you're doing your follow-up, it's fitting into your schedule. You got kids, you got a job, you got school, you got all these other th- responsibilities in your life, and you're fitting this into 
the you know hour or two that you have in your right. schedule a yeah. day and you're just building that momentum so that you can build something special and then you get to that third phase where okay now you're going to start scaling now you've got enough leads now you've got good systems and now you can get inbound leads right. that yes. you can jump right. on all the time that you right. can start spending the 300 to right. $500 per lead yeah, upwards exactly. to, you know, inbound. I mean, if you look at like the statistics, small market, big market, probably small market is probably $3,500 per deal. If we're wow. honest with inbound wow. Wow. for direct mail, wow. pay-per-click, pay-per-lead uh, for, for major markets, it's closer to five or 6,000 yeah. per right. deal. Yeah. You're talking about in the front end, those first couple stages there, listen, you should be in that, you know, you should be spending maybe a thousand dollars per deal, right. maybe you know right. five hundred dollars per deal. That's right. Yeah, you should be bootstrapping it more. But it's more, more, more effort and time. That's right. But you alleviate a lot of that. Well, is what I mean, you're saying you, well, with your company. That's, that's right. where you saw the opportunity. So what I what I tell people is, when you find me, leads are the hard part. Okay. After you find me, mm -hmm. what you're about to do with the lead yeah. becomes the new hard part. Okay. Right. So it's like I kind of. When they first, and that's the thing, is they're maybe tired of spending, well, Nick, I hired a VA, he quit on me, and this person, I don't even know if they're doing a good job, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and they're, they're frustrated. Because yeah. I think that's the other big mistake. You can't hire someone to do something you don't know how to do. Yeah. You can't. I yeah. mean, you can't. But it's not going to solve your problems. Right. You know, I, I bought a property, I hired an assistant, and I made her the property manager. Guess what? No one's paying rent. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I don't know how to do it, and I hired someone else who doesn't know how to do it. And we're not doing it right. Right. It's like, and what else should I expect? And and I think that that's one of the big issues is we either try to outsource too early or we don't, or, it, or it's too complex for us to do it ourselves. But with us, we put the lead in your hands. You have a whole new hard part. Right. Now, what am I, you'd be surprised. My company reminds me of a free gym membership. And I say that because no one ever walks into the gym on a free membership. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, and they even pay me. My service is not free. They pay me and I show up and I go, okay, I see we got 22 leads here. So, uh. See, my one-on-one my -on -one calls, they're two first. Mm -hmm. They're accountability calls sure. and informative. Hey, yeah. here's, here's your stats. Well, tell me, how'd the calls go? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you see, I was on vacation for a week, mm -hmm. and then I got backed up. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, so, but on the next campaign, I'm going to call them all. Okay, and that's that's the new problem now. We almost make it so easy mm -hmm. that they actually get the thing they've been waiting for and they don't do anything with it. And that's why a lot of my coaching and my courses are all based around making those callbacks seem simpler. Sure. Right? Here's the exact script. Here's exactly what you should say. I have like yeah, a, yeah. some great one-liners for everybody. It's not difficult. Here's what you should do. And it's like, and when you make it simple, they get, I, so I've learned when you make it simple and you give them a bunch of support, they do it. Yeah. They do it almost every time. So that's kind of my thing is making that simple and getting them to actually call the lead and have a good attitude. So, do you have any KPIs, any stats? And by the way, if anybody is listening and you're like, what, what is a KPI? It's a key performance indicator. It's basically just what are the results of your efforts, right? How many people did you call? How many people did you get a hold of? How many of those people want to sell their property? How long did it take before you could get an appointment, before you can get that under contract, before you get paid? All of those things really yeah, matter right. to make, yeah. you know, a future business decision. So, um, how, what, what, what's the typical, somebody uh, comes to lead mining pros and dot com and, <laughs> uh, and they, they get a lead from you. Is it, are, what, what's the average follow-up time before they actually get it under contract? So I've noticed a couple of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, there's two different kinds of leads. Mm -hmm. There's right nows yeah. and there's laters. Sure. Right. Um, and a lot of that can also be deciphered by your skill. You could turn laters into right nows. It could, it, if, if you're, it if could you're be sharper. the list too. Yeah. You know, there's right. certain lists that are time sensitive, like foreclosures or right. tax defaults yeah. or probates even. Yeah. Um, or, um, so, absolutely. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's some that are a little bit, little bit faster as opposed to just going after people that have equity right. and own properties well, that's in really, rough so shape. Our, our bread and butter nationwide is absentees with 35% or greater equity. Of course. That's our number one bread and butter. And I, I also call that the master list. Sure. And that's because, you know, and one thing, before I get to the KPIs real quick, I'll just say that one thing I've learned is, like, the human brain 
If it's one thing, it's not, a, I don't want absentee, I want pre-foreclosures. Yeah, well, there's pre-foreclosures on the absentee list. I don't want absentee, I want tax delinquent. Well, guess what? There's people that are tax delinquent on the house that they don't live in, and now they're way more motivated. So I call absentees the master list yeah, yeah. that we pursue. Okay. And uh, unless you're in cities like this, yeah. um, then those seven I named earlier, if you insist on hiring me, for cold calling, even though I asked you not to, and people still do insist, I tell them to go to more distress list. I call it PVT. It's mm -hmm. a combination list of pre-foreclosures, vacants, and tax delinquents. Love it. If that list doesn't perform, leave the market. Yeah. <laughs> because absentees isn't going to do any better with the realtors and the other investors and everything else, right? Yeah. So if we go there, we don't see it, we're going to abandon ship. Well, let's go pick a tertiary market. Yeah. Is, that, is that the cute word for those? Yeah. Um, Crushed it. Thank you. So then, now back to the KPIs. Um, there's a couple different things we're seeing and uh, I offer legends whenever I send my KPIs to my clients so they can, I've learned that if you're like, I got seven leads on 500 dials. They're like, well, is that good? I'm like, that's fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. But if I don't tell, if you're new and I don't tell you that's amazing, a lot of people are like, I don't know. Right. So I have legends now that I send out with people that I'm like, um, it, it's a dials per lead and a text per lead. Okay. That's how I like to break it down. Okay. So nationwide right now. Yeah. We're averaging on texting leads yeah. 80 to 150 text messages per lead. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you heard me say I sell 500 text messages for 82 bucks. Right. So if you do the math and let's say you get three. Four deals. Yeah, right. It's crazy. I mean, four leads, sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, exactly. And then for 82 bucks, we're at $21 per lead. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's number one. Then we jump over to cold calling. Cold calling at the peak of a campaign, either mm -hmm. a super rural market mm -hmm. or a land. We, we're big in the land right now. Right. So super rural, um, let's, say, let's say suburban plus, mm -hmm. suburban or rural, and or land. Best case scenario, we'll receive a lead in every 100 to 250 dials. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then what I like to see or what our, my clients have reported, and this is the teaching I like to give, is you should be closing a deal one in every 12 to 20 leads. Yeah. Okay. We see that across the board. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're doing the work, I can immediately tell if you're not doing the work, if you do, I hired a guy in. What do you mean doing the work? I, yeah, that's the hard part. That's the new hard part, right? That's the lead came in, read all the notes. Mm -hmm. Step one, step two, don't piss yourself off from reading the notes. The number one thing I teach against is no negative self-talk about the leads. Right. Right. I consider I'm like a relationship coach. Instead of coupling, uh, instead of counseling a married couple, I'm counseling the marriage between investors and leads. Yeah, sure. And it's like, hey, if you tell yourself you hate this lead, it's not going to go well. Yeah. If you tell yourself this lead sucks, so that's one of the main things I teach: are so doing the work, reading all the notes not pissing yourself off when you read them, making sure you still feel optimistic about the outcome when you call them, mm -hmm. and then calling them within a, I mean, if you're doing houses, I'm gonna tell you to call within a 30 minute window. Yeah. If you're doing land, you do have until the end of the day. Sure. And it's because they're not being pounded by other people, it's not as emotional, there's not as much stuff to think about, mm -hmm. you know, with land. But then it's moving quickly. And then the final piece of doing the work is, I call it keeping your customer service hat on. I think people put their sales hat on a little too early. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Um, when I got the job for that last education company, I actually walked out on my last career. When they interviewed me, I don't start the interview by saying, hey, walked out. <laughs> hey, hey, you going to hire me now? Mm -hmm. No, I have a great interview. I have a great interview. I worked there for three months, and I pull my boss aside, and I go, hey, I just want to come clean. Like, I walked out on my last job. Things were toxic, and, and I'm sorry I did that, right? Now, let's compare that to making an offer. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know you at all. You just got off the phone with my guy and I'm like, yeah, 50,000. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. We just met. What are we who, what are we even talking about? But instead, if I have one great call, hey, how is everything? I got your info from my partner, Sherry. Mm -hmm. You know, um, she asked, she she gave me this great synopsis of your call. I said a couple questions for you. But first, I just wanted to ask. She told me you wanted to sell. Why don't you tell me uh, how did you plan on doing that? It's one of my favorite questions. Mm -hmm. Because I think one thing we do as sales is we don't know what they're thinking, mm -hmm. and then we show up however the hell we want to show up, but it's not what they were thinking. If we know what they're thinking, we can now pivot, adapt. So say the line again. Um, you just got off the phone with Sherry mm -hmm. about 123 Sycamore Street. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he sure did. Great. Well, Sherry told me you were interested in selling. That's an enthusiastic seller there. Yeah. <laughs> By that <laughs> tone of voice yeah, that you just did. <laughs> yeah, she can't wait. Um, um, Sherry told me you may be interested in selling, but why don't you tell me 
how did you plan on doing that? How did you plan on doing that? Yeah. Love it. It's sick. Yeah. Because they're going to say, oh, well, Sally up the street fully remodeled and she sold for full price or, you know, a tree fell on the house and every time it rains and we got mold and we got it. Like, you're going to know, you're going to hear it. Yeah. Right. So now yeah. you know what to do. Um, so that, so that's the next part is keeping the conversations positive. So we talked about not making the offer, to, making an offer too soon is rapport loss. Mm -hmm. The same way as me telling my job, my new job, I walked out too soon is rapport loss. Mm -hmm. I tell them three months after I make them hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're like, Nick, that their loss, our gain, right? Their whole attitude flips. So we want to do the same thing. So I always recommend two to three solid, peaceful conversations with your customer service habit. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you show up to that third call, then you're wearing your sales hat. Guess what? When you save 50,000, they just had three great conversations with you. Mm -hmm. They know you're not an asshole. Mm -hmm. They know you're not trying to waste their time. So I'm a firm believer in making the deposits before we make a withdrawal. Got it. And a low offer, regardless, is a withdrawal. And they'll accept it better if we can have two or three of those nice conversations. Because don't forget, if they, you hire us, they're talking to an American who's killing it with mm -hmm. great customer service. For your cold callers. For your cold callers. And But some of your texters are live abroad? That's right. Okay. But the texting is all just scripted. Yeah, sure. And so um, you can actually, anyone can even customize that script that can just be 160 characters. So yeah. we can send blind offers on text messages and all kinds of cool stuff. Sure. Uh, which is great. Um, but yeah, so that's all just scripted. But yeah, so like if they talk to us, they have a great previous conversation. They have two great conversations with you. When you drop the ball or when you drop the pin or whatever, it's not mm -hmm. going to be as loud mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they've learned to love you a little bit yeah. over that time. So those are, those are some of my strategies. That well, I and listen, it's our job in lead follow-up to pull out the information, to pull out what is the condition of the property, what is right. their timeline to sell, what is their motivation or, or what is their problem, and what is their price. Right. You know what I mean? Nick, the, the best deals that I've ever done, they've told me the price first. Every single time. Every single massive deal that we do, and we'll do we'll, we'll do a six-figure deal assignment every 90 days, and no doubt about it, they will it's tell their us price. their price. It's their price. If I get this, it's yours. And you're like, deal. Right. I remember. Well, uh, it, you know, obviously you ask, is that the best you can do? Right, right, right. You right. know what I mean? And, and, and you even, just, if, even if they say a great number. You, but, well, right. and, and my guys won't even know how good of a deal is. They're just known They're to just do that. The they, don't comp, they don't comp the right. deals. They're just giving us and information to that, make sure. That's right? another big piece. I freaking hate it when my clients are like, I got the lead. I looked it right up on the county assessor site, yeah. and it said this, so I didn't call them. What? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, data yeah. is known to be incorrect everywhere, yeah. especially government-owned data right? yeah. like call the freaking person and figure out so i like that your system and i hope everyone's paying attention like it's not analyze it to death before you make the first call well listen you shouldn't do any research until you know it's a lead and a lead mm -hmm. in my mind is somebody that has truly made the decision they're going to sell their property yeah that's it yeah they, that. Like they 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 know that it's going to happen. They've yeah. made the decision. They're going to go through and they're going to sign all the documents required right. to transfer title to somebody else. Yeah. This right. isn't somebody that needs to be convinced. We're never going to convince That's right. anybody to, to sell, sell their, their property. That's right. And so, um, you know, we're deal finders, not deal creators, is what we say. Yeah, right, right. And um, and and that's so critical. And that that was something I learned from Tom Kroll, my mentor. And and it was so great when I heard that. I was like, we're deal finders, not deal creators, because right. I was trying to squeeze everything out right. of everything. And when they truly hadn't made the decision, that they're going to sell. Right. Yeah. And so that's the bandwidth. that's the discovery process. Right. Yeah. And, it, and if you're if you're truly and I say this, I, I, I say this to my seven year old when when I drop him off at school, I said, what are you going to be today? And he, he says, kind, confident and curious. And that's the same mentality that we have to have when we're speaking with people mm -hmm. and, and interacting with these property owners is we need to have that confidence or they're they're, right. they're, they're the, just the not going to they're, they're, they're not the going to feel like we know what we're doing. Right. We got to be kind. We, you know, we can't mm -hmm. just be blowing them out of the way with our personalities. We have to be kind. And I mean, kindness in a sense of we can we're versatile in adapting to their personality yeah. the way that they communicate right 
mirroring right. with them. You yeah. know what I mean? There's a yeah. kindness that you have to have right. to humble yourself to not just be bombastic when you want to be bombastic and not be real slow when you're real slow. You know what I mean? You got to yeah. you got to follow their their um, personality types and communication types, and then curious. Like if you're uh, if you're genuinely curious about what is going on with this, these people, mm -hmm. as opposed to how much can I make on this deal? Right. Is this a good deal or is this not a deal? Like all that stuff. And, and, and all this stuff comes with experience. But if you're genuinely curious, like what is the problem here? How can we help them out? What's going on with their life? You're going through a divorce. Oh, my yeah, gosh. I'm so right. sorry to hear that. Where are you live in? How are things going? You, you know, you get into the nitty gritty yeah. of the actual situation. Then you understand that the discovery process, 80 percent of the time they're talking you're listening right. and, and, and being and, there, right? And something I always say to support that is if you're always thinking about the next thing to say, you're going to say the wrong thing. Of course. If you genuinely care about their experience, mm -hmm. you're always going to say the right thing. So something I tell my cold callers or my clients, well, what am I going to say? No, no, no. Don't queue up responses. Because it's like, I'm sure we've all done job interviews. You ever ask a question in a job interview and they say something else? And it's because they had an answer queued up. They didn't listen to your question. They think they thought you knew. Sure. And they throw something else at you. And so it's like, really be... But that's a skills. I, I believe, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about mindset and going in with the right mindset. Um, and the mindset is really strengthened by skills and yeah. skills is strengthened mm -hmm. by reps, right? That's just it. Yeah. And that's all right. The confidence. more, the more people that you talk to, the better you're going to be. Right. You know, that's why I always suggest before they hire anybody, um, talk to a thousand property owners yourself so that you get those reps. You suggest a hundred and you actually do it in your company. Cause I say that Nick and nobody does it. Well, I, of course. I, I mean, a lot of, well, you're proving a point of get the get get the experience yourself or not, <laughs> but I think you should. <laughs> well, it, I want the confidence there. Mm. That's the biggest thing. Mm. I, I, it doesn't matter if you know every strategy, every creative finance, every cash offer, every flip yeah. offer, every buy and hold offer, all these stuff. It doesn't matter if you understand all that stuff. If you're not confident in the way that you're going to approach this conversation, it's going to be a problem and you get confidence by doing it a lot. I have such a great, I have so many ideas. I feel like I should buy a Mojo Dialer line and just let my customer cycle it. Why not? Hey, yeah. I've actually, I keep one running. You yeah. want to log in? Mm -hmm. Knock some call. I could just have it be all owner occupied. Yeah. Crap. I was like, it doesn't matter. Mess it up. It's all. You could load it up with for sale by owners. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't care who you talk to. It's just having a conversation idea. about real estate. And you're right about confidence. So when I went home, so my story is. I worked for a national education company. Yep. They only did direct mail. Right. People were, I had a woman call me crying one day. After paying the education fee, plus the cost of a direct mail campaign, she said, my phone didn't even ring once, Nick. She's, she has actually uses me at Lead Mind now, which is fun. She actually called me, and I was like, you're the, she doesn't even, she didn't even know. I was like, you're the reason I created this company. Mm -hmm. When you were crying to me, I said to myself, there has to be a better way for these people. Yeah, sure. There has to be. And then that's what happened. I looked down at my phone. And I go, well, we're already paying AT&T. Why don't we just get a list? And I, so I, I started teaching everyone to hand call. Yeah. Is what I did. Sure. Then when I went home, and again, all I did was teach people. I never made a single call myself. And then when I when that job was coming to an end, I was like, well, it's time for me to be a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. I saw other people get rich doing this, so yeah. it's my turn. Yeah. And I went home and I called people, and, and your confidence is rocky and shaky at first. And then day three, call 350, you're mm -hmm. like, Phew. Yeah. Like, yo, I got this. And I think that's the point that you're making is like, yeah. we have to let go of that initial fear. I have. So in the Rhino tribe, we have what's called the virtual office where people are just on Zooms all day okay. making calls. Yeah, yeah. And you, and when you go in there, you're thinking that like, it's like this intense boiler room, room type yeah, yeah. of thing. You, the, the dialer's going on your laptop. You've got your phone out and you're just, you hear a beep. Somebody answers. You go right into it. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. And, 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 and then it's just reps and reps and reps. And then all of a sudden, People in that group are making 30 new contacts a day. Eugene Lat Latson, 100 contacts every single day. Wow. Every Nick, every single day wow. in July, but Sunday to Sunday, bro. Oh, wow. Right? Did wow. the whole Seven thing. Seven days a week. Four deals. You know, I mean, wow. uh, I think it's like 80 or 90K worth of worth of uh, uh, deals contracts, there. Contracts, yeah. It's huge. 
eighty to ninety thousand in a month. Yeah. From just sitting in his in his office in yeah. in his house with his kids running around and his right. wife popping in, just making calls, just yeah. talking. And like, I imagine mean, that confidence, right? Yeah. And even if he didn't close deal, he's still ready to run through a brick wall. And one thing I did too is that he's got four deals from that effort. Yeah. I mean, he's so literally making. I, I I don't know how it's shaken out, but eighty to a hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, and th and that's that's the part that people don't get is like. The confidence that you get from that. And one thing I did that was my big secret mm -hmm. is I create several wins. So I, I'm sensitive. I give up easy too. We, we all have these issues. Sure. It's not just new people at things, right? It's like yeah. it's everybody. And so I created different wins. If someone told me, it was really nice talking to you today at the end of a cold call, I'd mm -hmm. be like, yeah, hell yeah. Because it's like I cold called them. Mm -hmm. they, about, they weren't a lead or whatever. So one thing I did too that really helped me was create wins other than deals and leads right. for yourself. The, I said the script perfectly. Huge win. I didn't stumble. I used to, I used to cold call with this partner. Shout out to Chris Marnalego. I love you, bro. But I used to cold call with Chris. And then every time I would be like, we could cash. I, I'll still fuck it up. Well, like cash quickly and close fast. And he's like, he's like every time, Nick, you can't say. Yeah. I'll say the whole script right. But the one day you get that right. Yeah. You're like, oh, and so it's like, I also like the micro wins, mm -hmm. too. Um, yeah, you got to stack the small wins. It, yeah, keeps you, keeps you in the game, you keeps you positive, too. Yeah. Um, but no, that, that that's huge. And then, and now that guy's ready, right? He, A, 90000 let's say it's $50,000 in profit. Great. Well, now he just bought some freedom, bought some free time. Well, now he's doing, he now, now he's scale. working with us for pay-per-click, and now he's getting inbound leads. That's exactly It's right. the next stage up. Right. You know, once Ascension. you start, once you start growing your team, you, you move from outbound to inbound. Essentially, right. what you're doing is you're still providing inbound for people right. uh, early a on. That's a, well, I, it's, I turn it, it's outbound just into your inbound. outbound is somebody's, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I would say... In my experience, um, from from our cold call leads and text leads, it was a 70-day follow-up. Mm. It was usually from the time that we got the – my acquisition team got the lead from our callers and texters. Mm. It was about 70 days got it. and then 30 days to close it. So it was a 100-day yeah. process yeah. from initial from the initial time it got into our acquisition team to it getting closed. Do you think that that's reasonable? I, I or, think that that's typical? reasonable if you're – so I have a couple of things that I think you're 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. I don't think the average person, A, has the tracking or the follow-up system that lasts 70 days. Right. So I think that what I see is people closing deals in a shorter window, but not because they're closing deals in a shorter window, but because they're letting all those go. Right. Is what I bet is happening. Does that make they're sense? They're just getting the you low guys were good yeah. That's exactly You yep. guys were good enough to do it. Right. Um, but, you know, what I'm – because I think that is something that maybe – my clients aren't don't have as dialed in. Sure. But you guys had it. And your point is probably if you did the math is we closed three times more deals at 70 days mm -hmm. than we did at 20. Sure. Would be a cooler thing for you to maybe look at. Right. Yeah. So we gave up at day 20. We would only have X. Yep. But if we go here, I think it's a good lesson for everyone else to understand. It was 31 percent where it was under 60 days. Got it. Yeah. Got but it. you got some outliers that are years. Right. I had a guy call me the other day, Nick, a woman called me back from your campaign. I just closed a deal. I just made a hundred thousand dollars. And it's like, it, they love that too. And it's good for me because it reminds them I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, how'd I find these guys? You know, uh, there definitely is long tails. And that's why my challenge is to the customers at that point. It's yeah. like, what do you do? I remember I had a woman call me up a complaint. This lead says they want to sell in three to six months. I said, oh, I got good news for you. It's incredible. You want to buy in three to six yeah. months. Are, are you going to quit? Are you yeah. done with real estate in two months? That's and right. it's, like, <laughs> it's like, we have to think a little further ahead. So what budget, so working with you to do, you, you pull the list, you pull the skip tracing, you get it in. You, you basically just do give people all. leads. Yeah. This is like a pay, almost like paper lead type, but that's more digital marketing based. This is more reaching out outbound and then putting it in. What's the minimum budget that somebody um, should put aside, and for how many months? You know mm -hmm. what I mean. I always, I, I always mm -hmm. say, you know, you need to have three months or six months, depending on the 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 marketing channel. channel right. So what what is a budget that makes sense? Because you don't you don't have contracts for your thing. Right. You, you're not going to keep anybody Everything, in exactly and whatever right. else. It's kind of a month to month, I assume. That's right. So, but what would what would be the minimum? And then what do you think is optimal? So, there's a couple of answers to that. One is, 
I tell people to expect to spend fifteen hundred to thirty five hundred dollars to close their first deal, mm -hmm. and I use the term first deal on purpose because now we should have a pipeline. Yeah, sure. If you if you first deal, that means you should have twenty leads. Yeah. Of your first deal, which means you have nineteen follow ups mm -hmm. and one closed deal. Sure. When we run that campaign again, we get twenty more leads, nineteen follow ups, one closed deal. Yeah. So. That is in, I'd imagine, more tougher markets, right? To be honest with you, I for land right now, I mean, it's bananas. Yeah. Um, I have client. I had a client close four deals on a thousand dollar purchase sure. for land. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's. I mean, granted, they're not twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, I mean, they're they're probably three thousand to twenty thousand. The average yeah. land deal, like they're a little smaller. Yeah. You know, uh, whereas where houses might be thirty to fifty. Yeah. Right, kind of thing. Um, but that that's just but it's it's only a numbers game. It, land deals don't close more often. You get more of them, yeah. which is why as a lead generator, I see the cyclical nature of numbers. Twenty should equal a closed deal. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, check your systems, check your leads. You miss something, guaranteed. Yep. Right. So, what I tell all my clients is my first goal is to get you to twenty leads. Right. Period. How, how do we get there? Um, so I would say. Anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars to get your first deal. After that, you should be rolling deals at fifteen hundred dollar mm. pops, mm. and that's any market. Well, I was just gonna say that's gonna depend on your lead flow, but that's where I offer one on ones to all of my clients. Sure. So let's let's monitor lead flow. Let's not. The only people that are mad at me are the ones that get bad results for a month. Then don't say anything for two months, and then one day they get a hair up their ass about something else, and they call me frustrated. Right. I'm like, first of all, I can help. It's a little late, and yeah. you spent the last three months getting really frustrated with me. Sure. But it's like, you know, what'd you pick? Well, I picked Miami. Okay. Well, that's that's a part of the problem. So right. is there any other market? So there's a lot of troubleshooting that's involved, but that's my job. Okay. You can pick the markets. It's my job to redirect you for market selection. Yeah. Okay. And then it's my job to make sure if things aren't going well to then redirect you again. Now, I don't watch your campaign like you do, so I always tell my clients, like, I'm never going to call and book a call with you about your campaign, but you can book a call with me whenever you want mm -hmm. about your campaign. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, so to say that, it's like, as long as we make sure you're getting those proper lead averages on the website. So on my average $1,500 purchase for houses, it's 8 to 20 leads. Mm -hmm. And I the more saturated your market, the closer you are to 8. The more suburban your market, the closer you are to 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. For land, those other way, the more you need more leads in a major market. Um, what I mean is um, the more, yeah, the, the more saturated the market, you're only going to get closer to eight. Got it. Yeah. For the cost. Right. Yeah, exactly. I thought you meant per deal. Yeah. Right. Got it. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For, yeah. For the yeah. deliverable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then for land, that same product is 20 to 60 leads. Yeah, sure. Which is crazy, which yeah, is yeah. why they're closing yeah. the deals. Um, but so that's kind of what's happening there. And then so. Through that, it's like, are we, where, where are we on the 8 to 20 meter is what I like to gauge, mm -hmm. right? And so, it, and, and that's where I come in. Like, hey, do we need to pick? And it happens all the time. Guy uses me. I Even though all my training says stay away from saturated market, don't give me the hottest zip codes in the hottest city. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. It's just not good. Um, and so, they hire me. But what me if there. you want those? Well, that's okay if your budget supports it. So, that's my, so one big thing I tell everyone as I, oh, well, where are you? Oh, well, I'm new. Okay, so if you just picked up basketball, would you be trying to play against Michael Jordan? So you're saying if I wanted to go, I, I could do better in Flagstaff than I could in Scottsdale? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's right. Cool. And you could probably even do better in between Flagstaff and Scottsdale than you could do in well, either. Well, sure. <laughs> Camp <laughs> but, Verde. But see, that's the, that's the kind of advice I give is to get people thinking outside the box. So I had a woman hire me in Seattle, Washington. I was like, that's, a, that's, I don't even have to say it's saturated. The word Seattle, everyone knows. Yeah. If everyone knows the name of the city, it's everyone else's first choice too yeah. to start there. I think that's the other thing we have that's to learn point. about human behavior, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so, and I go, nah, you know, we do a campaign. Nick, I got crap results, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you know, I said, is there anything around Seattle? We move four feet over. Next meeting, Nick, I closed the deal. I closed the deal. You were right. And that's happened at least five times. And that's why I love my one-on-ones mm -hmm. because we do little pivots yeah. and then it does change everything. And they're, they're not drastic, so I'll cover a couple of my tips if that's okay. Yeah. Um, if you're in a saturated market, hope's not over, mm -hmm. do a trip. By the way, I, I, I feel like you, you mentioned this before, but I really want to reiterate this. Saturated in the sense that there is 
calls and texts from all industries. That's correct. Not just us. I, I don't want, we, we have this conversation and I have this conversation often with people that are starting, which is, is there, is it too saturated with wholesalers? And I'm like, there's unlimited amount of deals there. Right. Right. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that you can convert them and how to find them and do all that type of thing. There are way more deals than there are us. Yeah. And batch right. batch, by the way, um, batch skip tracing and batch services did it paid like something ridiculous, 30 or 50 grand to do a do like a, this report on how many wholesalers there actually were. Okay. And it was between 70 and 90,000. This is in 2022. In the United States? Yes. Oh, this wow. is in 2022. Now, I would say there's 50% of that. Right, right. I would. Right. Oh, yeah, left. You're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you're yeah. talking, let's let's go upper, you know, twenty five to 45,000 actual wholesalers in the in the world. Yeah. There's 14 million distressed properties. <laughs> right, right, right. 10 to 14 million. I mean, right. that's just the stats. Right. That's that's the U.S. Census stats. 10 to 14 million compared to 25,000. There's yeah. more deals right. than there are us. So I just want to clear that. And that's just a good attitude to have, right? And that's what I was talking to someone. Before you call the lead, you need to focus on what cheers you up about calling the lead. And data like that mm -hmm. it, it excites. Of it's course. exciting data. It's like, because we want to think oh, the, the cards are against us. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to believe every every step of the way. Yeah. You know? Um, oh, oh, I was talking about the, the tips for the, yes. for the conversions. So if you're in the saturated market, and you don't want to leave. Happens all the time. Nick, this is where, this is where my contractors are. This is where my team is. Cool. Got it. Yeah. Love it. So what I would do is I would find the zip code with the least amount of transactions mm -hmm. in that market. We start there. Cool. And I tell You're them, doing that data? Um, I tell them how to find it. I've okay. got a training video where they can go to list source okay. completely for free. Yeah. Pull all the stuff. Okay. And then find the they transaction. You don't have to pay for list source? You you only have to pay when you export. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool I video. know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, can, yeah. you can still see how many wood are cash there. Cash buyers. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, cash buyer. Yeah, per, per, per properties purchase cash. Right? Yeah. Kind of thing. You can still look at the numbers. So then you pick the ones with the lowest amount. Mm -hmm. um, and then we start there. And then what I tell people is if you're not happy with those results, it's not going to get better anywhere else. Right. Right. And that, and again, I'm not saying I'm just logically talking about math. I'm a mm -hmm. big math nerd. Mm -hmm. So that's step one. You don't want to leave. We go there. You're OK with me even a little bit. Every area, every area has one part of town or one nearby city that has a shitty reputation. Mm -hmm. And I don't and that, that doesn't mean war zone. Sure. OK, I yeah. don't I don't push wars on anyone. Actually, I joke and I say white trash is actually where you want to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't mm -hmm. want to be like in a war zone. But so like where I grew up was a town called Lakeland. Mm -hmm. There was this little crappy town called Mulberry right next to it. OK, maybe the 50 people that live in that town just heard me shout them out. But if I were to invest in Lakeland, it would be in Mulberry. OK, and it's because it's right there. It's one mile away from the busiest part of town. But it's like as soon as you go into Mulberry, there's like tumbleweeds rolling. through. It's perfect. It's perfect because no one else is going there. Mm -hmm. It needs gentrification is another great way to put it, right? And it's close enough to the heart of the city that even if you get an investor, it's three miles away. Yeah. If you got an investor and it's a deal, they're moving out to buy it. So my next thing is find the nearest, crappiest reputation, right? Like, oh, those redneck, oh, those guys, are. oh, that part of town, oh, there's only trailers over there, oh, mm -hmm. there's only this. Whatever that is. You have two options when you find those. One, I recommend if you, again, you don't want to leave your city, pick all the zip codes in your city that border that crappy area. Okay. It's guaranteed to be the crappiest part of the city, right? Yeah. The place that neighbors the crappiest town, right? Or if you're okay with it, go into the city. So that's the advice that I give people if they are stuck and they don't want to move markets that are far away if they're really close. So lowest transactional zip codes, and some people ask why. That's kind of obvious, but you know, if you were a burger joint, mm -hmm. you wouldn't put a burger joint between a Culver's and a McDonald's, right? So when you're investing, you, I don't recommend starting where there's thousands of other transactions going on, right? That's number one. Number two is um, find the um, find a crappy part of town, pick all the zip codes in the city you want to be in that border that crappy part yeah. of town. Then three is, or just go into that crappier town, <laughs> right? So that, that's kind of how I... Uh, or spend more. Right. See, you're saying that to me, and I'm like, okay, that's fine if you have a low budget. I, I want to be where the action is. I want to be 
where the, the I put out a deal and I got it, multiple it offers. Right away. You know what and, I mean? Well, but and, I'm willing to pay for that. Right. And then so that's I do have a habit of speaking only to cost. Right. Right. Which is what you're alluding I get to. It. And then I spoke to one client. I'm in the Don Costa's mastermind. Yeah, sure. One of his clients calls me up and he goes, Nick, I'm paying 17000 per deal right now in San Francisco. And I not said, bad. I said, I guarantee <laughs> you, bad. you give me $5,000. I'll really? Get you a deal. Yeah, yeah. 5000 bucks on cold calling and texting. That is a lot. So he gives me 1500 bucks. Yeah. We got him 13 leads. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the downside of not having contracts and commitments. He's too busy. Yeah. He never hires me again. Yeah, I yeah. see him at another mastermind. I go, bro, we got 13 leads for 100 and, for 1500 bucks. I was like, bro, we got to do that again, dude. It's like that, what I told you, one in 20 close. So he's so if he did that again, yeah. $3,000 equals 26 leads got if it. the numbers continue to average, yeah, right? Sure. So it's like I start looking at stuff like that. So and that's why I always say that and then people sometimes I'm talking to big dogs and they go, "Well, I got the money." Well, if you got the money, that's okay cuz that talk also in a way, just also helps set expectations for you. We're not going to blow it out of the water, but you're also probably converting leads at three times the rate as the new person is oh, too. Sure. So you can afford to take a three-time lead flow cut, yeah. right? Because you're like, no, I'm, I'm good with. I'm good with. Actually, someone in your shoes, you're like, you can get me three leads mm -hmm. for a thousand bucks. You're like, that's actually great. But a new person, unlimited budget. That's right. But a new person, yeah. if I said that to them. They would tell me to kick rocks, right? right? Sure. And that's why I and I and they're both true, but I do default. Like another talk where I accidentally look at numbers too much is, I met with this client and they only got five leads, and that wasn't a big purchase, like a thousand dollar purchase. I was like, God, you know, is this? It's like, yeah, you know, you know, this is a little low for us. You know, we generally like to see it to be here, be there. I get done talking. He goes, did I tell you I closed a deal last week, by the way? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start leading with how'd the leads go. Then I'm going to analyze I, listen, the Nick, listen, I would rather have five leads and close two of them than 500 right. leads and close 10 of them. Right. You know what I right. mean? Like, exactly. if I can get that that consistency and 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 not clog up my lead follow-up system as much your my setters, acquisition, for right yeah sure. your compers for right, sure yeah. you know the the i i think that people should be throwing out more leads uh that they have quicker um yeah. depending on their strategy just so that the bad leads don't hide the best leads you right. know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. No, good um, point yeah you so. don't like we were saying about all the phone calls happening yeah you get all the phone calls you start ignoring other calls you get a bunch of bad leads the time a good one comes across your desk. Yep. They're probably just like those other guys. So the question, Nick, comes back to how, how much monthly budget? If somebody's just starting out, you know what I mean? Yeah. What's the minimum that you can work with them? Is so it two grand a month? My, is it my, my smallest purchase is 550 bucks a month on the, on the website. And yeah. what, what do they get for that? For, us, for that, we pull 625 records in yep. their criteria, yep. skip trace them all. Okay. We're imagining 500 come back with the phone number. Yep. Then on those 500, we execute 1,000 American cold calls mm -hmm. and 500 text messages. Cool. So everyone gets everything. Awesome. People say, do you do it in a sequence? We do not do it in a sequence. No. We do. Yeah, right. That's a waste of time. No. We're just wasting more time. Yeah, yeah. Waiting for someone to reply right, to right, then, right. well, we're going to scrub three people off the list. <laughs> what the hell are we talking about? Text them all, call them all. How yeah. many months should somebody, should somebody have six months of that saved up? To use us? Yeah. You know, honestly, there is immediate feedback with us. No, I know. On my one-on-one -on -one calls... But you you pay that now, get leads coming in. The way that I look at it is our business is a big locomotive. It's mm. a big train. Once you stop, and the it. engine of that train is lead generation, right? right? right. Yeah. And so you got to constantly be putting that coal into that engine. Yeah. Uh, what I would say, um, with that with that being said, is I would say if that if that's your goal to have more, is I would buy a different package. That that's the cheapest that we start at. Yeah. Right. If you have more in the coffers. What I would do is I would buy more, but do it bi-weekly. And I'll give you an example, mm -hmm. especially if you're new. A lot of people go, should I run this campaign for a month? Because you tell us how long we run it for. Right. Anything you buy is one to four weeks you pick. Yeah. So what I tell people is, first off, if you're full-time, I would do that $550 one in one to two weeks if you're full-time in this. Mm -hmm. Then if you get a lot of leads, take the next two weeks to button them up. 
Sure. Then when the month restarts, knock out one of those again, you know, because I've also learned that I don't want to overload you with leads. Mm -hmm. And to the same point as too many leads will cause paralysis Yeah. too. So I, I have a couple of trainings in there, cool. um, but th that's, that's what I would recommend is the truth is you run your first couple campaigns and you find the cadence of leads. Yeah. I don't always know how many we're going to get. It's going to fall in that range. Once we see our average average out, then you budget according to your bandwidth. Yeah. If that makes sense. But I do agree like six months of that is. I'll just answer the question. Yeah. Guys, if you don't, you need three months, <laughs> you need a lead, a minimum 90 days to, to commit to it. You do because you're going to get consistency there. It's right. going to it's going to take some time to convert these to appointments, convert these to yeah. uh, to contracts. Yeah. You got to be dedicated to it. And if it were me, anytime I look at a new marketing channel, it's six months minimum. Right. That's what's making the decision. Right. right. I'm going to I'm going to commit to six months of this at a minimum before I really know the stats, before yeah. I really decide if this is good or bad or mm -hmm. whatever it is, and, what, and, and, and what kind of stress tests that I can put on my company and my acquisition team um, when it comes to these marketing channels. So um, if uh, guys, if you're, if you're hearing Nick, leadminingpro.com, yeah, pros.com. Pros. Yeah. Leadminingpros.com is where you can check all that out. Um, and you work with people just starting out. You're working with people that are ready to scale. Veterans, you're working with, yeah. you know, people that uh, have big businesses and, and solopreneurs. So, yeah. Uh, Leadminingpros.com. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Rock and roll, man. Nice to have you on here. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Glad to be here. Really great stats. Yeah. I mean, really, really great stats. I love that you have certain markets that you wouldn't cold call. You would just do text. I yeah. think that that is really critical. I think that, um, you know, somebody to go out and to be able to get their first deal between 1500 and 3500 bucks. Uh, mm -hmm. is exceptional. And if right. they can't afford it, great. Get on the phone and do it yourself until you close some deals. Yeah. Right? right? You know what I mean? You're only going to get experience. You're only going to build up your bank account that way. And then you can start hiring it. Um, but, but I mean, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal cost no, per you. value. And, you know, and the, the cool thing, too, is I try to remind people is we're not just... I poise as a lead gen. Right. But I get free one-on-ones. Everyone gets my cell phone. Yeah. And, uh, and then I offer free group coaching every Tuesday cool. and then free courses. And just like the guy out there who I started off by saying, I need to get a deal. Yeah. I literally said, he doesn't have a lot of money. He doesn't have, I said, you buy a texting package. It's mm -hmm. our lowest cost per lead package. Yeah. And you call me yeah. when you get leads. And yeah. so that's, that's, that's like additional level of service. It's not just you're off in the wild. It's that you get expert analysis. So even on your three month commitment, it's so funny. I, I love this company because you're trying to like nail down for a long time. And I'm so like pay as you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm almost like, no, no, yeah, no. But then, then it but just, you're right. It, my experience, the more you invest, the more you want to return. The more you want to return, the more attention that you're going to get mm. the, put, put to it. The more attention you put to it, the better it's going to be. Yeah. It's not time management. It's not priority management. It's not energy management. It is attention management. Right. Where right. is your attention? Right. That's where you your know what goes. I mean? <laughs> and when you and when you when you put aside and you go, hey, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm spend, gonna make this work. I'm gonna spend six grand over the next three months, I am going to get a return. Yeah. I am going to find some great gonna, opportunities. And I will say this. It's like, and it shifts around all those other things. Yeah. And, you know, you are right about that. And I will say that the clients that I speak to, my most successful clients are always positive ones. Yeah. Even if they're brand new. I had a girl call me up once. Nick, I know this is going to work because my mentor told me about it. And he only recommends things that work. Yeah. Her very first day. She got a lead. Mm -hmm. She got it under contract on Monday, sold it by Thursday. She only made $3,000 because yeah. it was in um, Muncie, Indiana. Sure. <laughs> okay. I think house is only 22000 bucks out there or yeah. something. I don't even know. You and have that. been for 100 <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah, right. But, you know, I love that she knew. And within five days of her knowing, and I think that's the point that you're making, was when we commit to it, yeah. you know, we go places with it. And But one thing I was saying, too, is if results aren't panning out, like, I'm here for that. Yeah. The average direct mail company, there's no post office to call to ask why your mail didn't hit. Sure. There's no, the, you know, so I offer that hands-on approach. And, and cool. when, when, you, when, you, when he says budget, he doesn't mean you blindly follow. He means you set it aside and we adapt and we change and we move through it. Yeah. And it's not just like, oh, well, I did this and I did the same markets the whole time. Well, sometimes that could be the problem if we didn't adapt or change lists or anything, too. Yeah. But that's where I come in, again, to help direct you to the best areas because I'm pay-as-you-go, too. So I only make more money if you're satisfied. Awesome. And that's why everything's built up for that. Awesome.
Great to have it on you. Thank you. Yeah, so they good. should just go to leadminingpros.com, check that's it out, right. and that's where they're at. That's where it's at. Bam. Awesome. It's all right there. Absolutely incredible. There you go. Leadminingpros.com, guys. That is our podcast episode for today. If you have any comments, make sure that you put them in the comments section. We answer those on YouTube, and we do a really good job of making sure that there's no mystery behind any of the content that we put out. We want to give you all the resources that you're looking for so that you can go take massive imperfect action be a 7,000 pound rhinoceros charging towards your real estate goals i love you guys so much i am brent daniels encouraging you to go out there and talk to people till next time see you guys, see you guys.